Come on, let's put our hands together and magnify the Lord together. Hallelujah, exalting his name and lifting him high in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, tell him, he's able. Say it again, he's able. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. None other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Glory to God. What a beautiful presence of the Lord has filled this place. Thank you, Jesus. What a great treat it is to be in the house of the Lord from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. His name is to be praised. Oh, can we do it one more time? Let's praise his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is a great delight to be here tonight and to have been here today at this wonderful church. And we give honor to Bishop and First Lady Johnson. God bless you. Let's give them a great big hand. God bless them in the name of the Lord. We thank God for them, their leadership, their friendship, and uh, we thank God for Greater Morning Star Apostolic. We thank God for the AFFI. Amen. God bless the AFFI. I, I love seeing how God is using this great fellowship, and and we are we just honored to be able to to be in communion with you today. I again, I wish that my family were able to come, and they do too. I sent my wife a little clip of the choir singing this morning. And I sent it to her this afternoon. She texted me back and said, I'm jealous. <laughs> Amen. They certainly wish they could be here. I'm going to rub it in a little bit. But, uh, but they certainly love you and give you their greetings. And uh, I thank God. Elder Davis, thank you so much, Elder and Lady Davis. God bless you so much for your kindness. And we thank you for your hospitality. And, and always just oh, it's always so wonderful to be able to be here. And uh, hasn't this choir been marvelous all day long? Ah, ah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They have led us in such beautiful worship, and we give God the glory for it. I would invite your attention this evening to the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew, and I will be reading from the 22nd chapter of the book of Matthew, I'm going to read from verse 41 through verse 46. Matthew chapter 22, verses 41 through 46. Amen. The Bible says this, While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He saith unto them, how then doth David in spirit call him Lord? Saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Oh, hallelujah. I like that. No man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man. Now, now notice it doesn't say neither dust any man. It said neither durst. That, that word durst has in it the connotation of dare. Neither dare any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. And I just want to preach to you on this subject for a little bit tonight. The answer to every question. The answer to every question. Could we just lift up our voices unto the Lord tonight and ask his blessing upon the remainder of this service. Heavenly Father, we love you and give you praise for you are great and greatly to be praised. 
I ask, Lord, that you will bless this time we have in your word. I pray that you will help us to receive it, to understand it, to apply it. God, let it be a quickening word within us. Lord, help it to make us in your image. We give you praise tonight and we honor your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. And amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. It is not terribly long into life that we begin to learn that we don't know the answers to every question. Uh, we, we find out pretty quick that we don't know a whole lot. And, uh, and, and, but early in life, we sometimes think there are those who do have the answer to every question. And I remember my oldest daughter, who's 19 years old now, when she was, she was just a, a little girl, she, she was asking one question after another. And it was, it was one of those sessions where, where it was, Daddy, why this? Daddy, why that? And I would try to answer a question, and no question, no answer that I gave was good enough. It, it just led to another question. Well, then why? And so then I said, well, that's because. And then she said, well, what? And then how? And then when? And why? And why? And why? And finally, I was, y'all, I had answered it, like 20 questions, nothing. I was about on 40, 50 and I just responded. I said, well, sweetheart, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And that took her back. That, that shocked her. She said, but dad, you know everything. And while I felt like this was a, a good assessment on her part in that moment, <laughs> and I was very pleased to hear that that's where she was in her thinking, I knew it wasn't true. And I knew she was going to learn soon enough. Daddy doesn't know everything. And, and that's the way it is in life. We, we, we begin to figure out we don't know everything. And even the smartest people in your world, your parents, your teachers, your, your pastors, your, 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 the, the people in your life, you realize that no human being truly understands all things. We depend on God. To give us wisdom and give us understanding and give us knowledge and insight. And so it is that, that that's how life goes. And as life progresses, our questions progress. They increase in intensity. They start out in life by, by saying, why is the sky blue? And, and, and we ask questions. Some are just out of the blue and offhand and un unpredictable, and then they become more focused. We begin to really question things and ask, well, why is this so, and why is that so? And, and the word question is an interesting word. The root of the word is quest. It is a quest. It is a journey that a person takes. So you've got be you got to be careful with, with where you are directing your questions. Uh, because where you direct your questions matters. Because where you direct your questions, there's a, there's a quest you are taking. Uh, you are on a journey somewhere. And it's important that if you have a question about anything, you go to the creator of all things. And if you especially have a, a question about God, you don't, know to, you don't need to go to anybody but God about that question. You need to go to God, to the man of God, to the word of God. And you need to ask and ask, ask anything you need to ask of the Lord. You, you, you need to know that God is not afraid of your questions. God is a big God and he's able. He's able to move on your behalf, and he's able to answer your questions. Don't go to some uh, New Age religion and ask your questions 
Ask your questions of the Lord himself. Ask your questions of the God who created all things. And there's no question too hard for God. In fact, one of the questions, the probably the most severe question in all the Bible was asked by Jesus himself. I don't know of any more difficult question, more complex question, more, more earth-shaking question than the question he asked while on the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And you think your question is going to be a troubling question to God? God is ready for your question. He's ready with an answer. Jesus asked this most difficult question. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But notice where he asked it. Notice his proximity to the cross. He was nailed to the cross. When you ask life's most complicated questions, ask them close to the cross. We sing a song near the cross. One song said in the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Ask your questions within proximity to Jesus Christ and him crucified. Ask your questions at the foot of the old rugged cross. Don't go off to yourself like Cain, a vagabond, a wanderer, and then ask, am I my brother's keeper? No, get as close to God as you can. Get within the shadow of the cross. Stand where the blood is pouring down. Stand in a place of humility before him and ask the most complicated questions that have haunted your mind. Oh, hallelujah. And God will take you on a quest that will cause you to arrive at an answer that will enlighten your life and will reveal to you the very beautiful purpose of all things. People ask questions in this society, in this generation. What is the meaning of life? Why am I here? In fact, questions are haunting this generation, and they're asking, they're asking questions of some of the some of the most some of the most challenging questions, and they're asking it of all the wrong sources. To the point that people are so confused. I mean, you know they're not talking to God about it because God is not the author of confusion. People don't know whether they're male or female in 2019. Because they're not going to the author and the finisher of their faith with their questions. They're talking about it amongst themselves. They're, they're, they're people who are looking to themselves for guidance. And you can't do that. The heart is deceitful above all things. And it is desperately wicked. You, you, you've, never, you've not met a devil more deceitful than your own heart. All this nonsense about follow your heart. Your heart will take you on a trip. You start asking your heart questions and your heart will take you on a quest. And you don't know, you don't know where you're going. You become lost. Groping in the darkness. Unaware of where you are or who you are. I never, I never, I never thought we'd see this day. I was, I've been preaching perilous times for a long time. But I never dreamed that we'd get to a place where people are so confused that they would lose their sanity and that it would be called normal and it would be called good. I didn't know we would see that day, but here we are. And it's not time for the church to, to go bury our heads in the sand. It's time for the church to lift Jesus higher than we have ever lifted Jesus before. It is time. Listen. Don't put a bushel over your light. Let your light shine. Let the love of God so emanate from you. It's not time to backslide. It's not time to reprobate. It's not time to turn away from the things we know are true. It's time to love Jesus and live Jesus and show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness and into this marvelous light. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name.
You've got to be careful with the questions that come at you. This is the way the devil tempted Eve. He came to Eve and he came with questions. Hath God said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Hath God said? He always puts a question mark in the minds of those he's tempted. And it always has to do with the word of God. He likes to take the word of God and twist it. He likes to, to say to you, hath God said, hath God really said? To think about what you believe and think about what you think. And, and then and, and ask yourself, hath God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And then Eve starts to entertain this conversation with the serpent. You better be careful with your interactions with the serpent. Let me just tell you something. If a snake starts talking to you, you need to walk away. That is your... That is your first cue. If a snake, I, it doesn't even have to talk to me. If I see it, I'm gone. I'm gone. And that's what the Bible said. The Bible said, flee youthful lust. It didn't say stand around and negotiate with it. It said, flee it. It didn't say stand around and try to overcome it. It said, flee it. Run. Run. Walk away. Get out of there is engaging in this interaction with the serpent and these questions are flying at her and she begins to question the word of God and so so this is an, an age old trick of your adversary trying to get you to somehow think differently about the word of God now we've read from Matthew chapter 22 Matthew chapter 22 is a chapter of questions it's a chapter of questions. Jesus is bombarded with questions that are coming at him from every which direction. The Bible says that first the Pharisees stirred up the Herodians. And the Herodians come to Jesus. And now listen to how sneaky they are. Listen to what the Bible said. The Pharisees took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Now you got to understand the Pharisees are lawyers. And they were determined we're going to sit Jesus down and get him talking. And we're going to hold everything he says to account. And we're going to question this in such a way and phrase this in such a way that we're going to trap him. In a, in a way of saying something at the beginning that contradicts with something he says toward the end of the conversation. They took counsel. That's, these are legal terms. Counsel. These counselors, how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians saying, now listen to how they approached him. Master, we know that thou art true. You can't trust everybody that has a praise on their lips. Master, we know that thou art true, and we know that thou teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. You're not concerned about what people think of you. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? We know you are true. We know you teach the truth, and we know you won't mince words. So tell us, what do you think? Is it lawful? To give tribute unto Caesar or not. See we know your kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. And you've taught your followers that there's a spiritual kingdom that is coming. And so we want to know since this is a spiritual kingdom. Should we even bother giving tribute unto Caesar? And we're going to entangle him in his talk. They think there's no way out of this question. But Jesus the Bible said, perceive their wickedness. He was not confused. He was not deceived by their praise or flattery of him. He said, why tempt you me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. He just said, show me the money. <laughs> Don't just come in here. Don't just come in here praising me. Acting like you're a true believer in what I'm saying. Show me the money. And they brought unto him a penny. 
And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, It is Caesar's. Jesus saith unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and render unto God the things that are God's. Don't try to, don't try to entangle me in my talk, saying that because I preach a spiritual kingdom, that you don't need to be good citizens and obeyers of the law. Because being, listen, somebody said, well, they're so heavenly, they're no earthly good. Let me tell you something. There's no such thing as being so heavenly that you're no earthly good. Because if you're heavenly minded, being heavenly minded is all about being good on earth. Thank you, Jesus. But that's what the enemy will try to do. He will the first, one of the one of the ways he tries to get your mind into a deceitful question is he will try to get you to question the word of God. He will try to entangle God's words in your mind. And he'll try to pit one scripture against another scripture. And he'll try to tell you that this contradicts that. I'm preaching to somebody right now. And that the devil's been trying to confuse you. Let me tell you something. If you will rightly divide the word of truth and study to show yourself approved unto God, what might have looked like a contradiction at one time is just the opening to an unfolding revelation of the goodness and the power and the wisdom and the love of God. the devil try to be the spokesperson for the scriptures God said I am not the author of confusion but the enemy will author confusion in your mind that's not the only question that he had to deal with that day the Bible says that when they had heard these words they marveled they left him they went their way the same day came to him Sadducees and they say there is no resurrection they do not believe in the resurrection. And yet, they, and yet they claim to be understanding the law, but they do not believe in the resurrection from the dead. Now you got to understand something, ladies and gentlemen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is all about the resurrection. You can't take the resurrection out of the gospel of Jesus Christ and still have the gospel. Paul said if there's no resurrection, then our preaching is in vain. But I want somebody to understand there is a resurrection. It is not all about what happens here. There is coming a day where no sorrow shall come. There is coming a day when he shall wipe every tear from our eyes. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised in corrupt then we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord hallelujah oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God who hath given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ but look what the devil does the devil tries to attack the very core of your Christian faith That's what he's after. He wants to get you to stop believing in the fundamentals of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So here come the Sadducees with their question. And this is how he begins to challenge the core of our faith. He starts painting some outrageous scenario. Listen to what they did. They said, let's say there's a guy. Let's say there's a man. If a man die having no children. His brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now, he said, so let's say there's seven brothers. And the oldest brother marries a wife. And, and, and they have no children. And then the brother dies. And the next brother marries her. And they have no children. And then the third brother marries her. And, and they start painting this scenario. And they get down to the seventh brother. And they all die. And they said, so when, we, when there's going to be this resurrection... Whose wife will she be? And Jesus is listening to this question. And he, he responds to them. And he listened to this. He said, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Hallelujah. Let me just tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you something. The enemy cannot 
come against the core of your Christian faith if you'll know the scriptures. You know where your error is? Your error is that you don't know the scriptures. If you will take the time to know the scriptures, oh hallelujah, then you will understand the power of God. But the, there's a Darth in the, in the church in 2019 where we know how to sing and we know how to praise and we know how to shout and we know how to cry when it's slow and dance when it's fast, but we don't know the scriptures. That's where the error is. In the name of Jesus, you need to climb up out of that spirit of error that you're in and know the scriptures. We have got too many apostolic believers, too many Christian believers who are afraid that their faith is compromised or conflicted because they do not know the scriptures and therefore they do not know the power of God. They walk around in fear. They walk around troubled in their mind. They walk around doubting whether God is even existent or not. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. You need to search the scriptures. They are they will which testify of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I preach to you the scriptures, I'm not talking about just some ancient book. This isn't like other literature. This isn't Shakespearean. This isn't, this isn't Tolstoy. This isn't Homer. This isn't, this isn't the Odyssey. You hear what I'm telling you? This is the holy word of God. The scripture was not given by private interpretation, but by holy men of old who spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and to the joints and the marrow of the bone. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word, O oh Lord, is forever settled in the heavens. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You ask the question, where am I going wrong? I tell you, you don't know the scripture. But I'm afraid. No, 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 no. You need to get back in the scriptures. God has a word for you. I'm going to give somebody a word right now. Are you ready? You ready for what the scriptures will teach you? Here you go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers. Under His wing shalt thou trust His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Listen to this. Hear this. I want everybody who's afraid to hear ye the word of the Lord. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. I was dealing with the spirit of fear one time, Elder Davis, and, and it was just haunting me. And, and it was, I'll tell you what he was doing. He was pointing out all of the statistics of people who had suffered what I was afraid I would suffer. And as I was dealing with this spirit of fear, the Lord spoke to me and said, Stop comparing yourself to others. You are not others. I am your God and I am with you and all things work together for your good. Do not be afraid because of what you have seen others experience. You start letting that spirit of fear speak intimidating thoughts into your mind. But notice what verse 7 said. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come. Come nigh thee. Only with
with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation hear ye the word of the Lord there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling Hear ye the word of the Lord, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands. Lest you dash your foot against a stone, you shall tread upon the lion. Don't be afraid of the lion. You shall tread upon the lion. You shall tread upon the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. I will show him my salvation. Somebody needs to reach up right now and grab that. And say that's a word for me. Come on, I'm talking about standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. See, what the devil will do is he will come into your world and he'll start painting these scenarios that are far-fetched and exaggerated. And he will come against the core of your faith in God. And he will start saying things like, well, what if this happened? And then what if that happened? And then what if they said this? And then what if this occurs? And then what? And then what? Like, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> then what? And Jesus said, you're in error because you don't know the scriptures. And because you don't know the scriptures, you don't know the power of God. I want you to know that God's got a scripture for everything you're facing. God's got a word for everything you're facing. You can look it up in the major prophets or the minor prophets or the gospels or the epistles or the revelation or the books of poetry or the books of law, the books of history. You can look it up in the Psalms and the Proverbs. I'm going to tell you, I don't know where you'll find it, but somewhere in that word, God will have a right now word for your life. It doesn't matter how complex the question. It doesn't matter how difficult the question. God's got a word for you. And you're going to find it in his scriptures. And that's where you're going to know ah, the power of God. And you're going to come up out of that session with the scriptures. And a sweet hour of prayer with renewed faith. And refreshed enthusiasm. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I like that word enthusiasm. That word enthusiasm. Thu is where we get our word. We get it from the word theo or, or where we get our word theology. So it's literally referring to God. So enthusiasm is God in us. Hallelujah. You know why I have enthusiasm? Is because the Spirit of the Lord is inside of me. And the Spirit of God inside of me bears witness with the Word of God that I hear and that I read. And that comes to me and it begins to minister to my questions. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus said, you don't even know the Scriptures. You, know, you don't know the power of God. He is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. That's why Jesus would, look at, Jesus would look at the saints who died and said, they're not dead, they're only sleeping. My God have mercy because he's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. I want somebody to understand that if you'll get into the scriptures, the scriptures will address some of the most far-fetched, outlandish questions the devil has put in your mind. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 34 said, verse 33, I love this. When the multitude heard this. 
they were astonished at his doctrine. When the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question and said, they were, he was tempting him. He said, Master, which is the greatest commandment? Now, this is one of the age-old tricks of the enemy. What is the greatest commandment? See, because this is what the enemy likes to do to, to the child of God. He likes to say, what is the most important thing? Forget all the other stuff. Tell me the bare minimum of what I got to do. And they literally thought Jesus was going to answer this question by saying something like, well, I, man, wow, I never thought of it that way. That's a really good question. Man, there's so many good commandments. I don't know, maybe, I mean, not killing people, that's a good one. Probably shouldn't kill people. So, yeah, man, we'll probably have to go, with, well, wait a minute, but, but you shouldn't steal either. So, boy, this is getting tough. They thought he was going to respond as, as though he didn't know. And he said, listen, the greatest commandment is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And him only shall you serve. And you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And the second greatest is like unto the first. And you didn't even ask about the second greatest. But I'm going to tell you about it anyway. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And if you can fulfill these two commandments then you fulfilled all of the commandments because all the law and all of the prophets hang upon these two commandments they were asking what what is the bare minimum I gotta do I just, just give me one good solid commandment and I'll do that and Jesus said there are two and these are the these are the commandments upon which all the law and the prophets hang and the Bible said that while the Pharisees were gathered together, are you ready? Jesus asked them. Uh-oh. They came with questions. Oh, you got questions. And Jesus turned the tables on them and said, I've got some questions too. Now you need to understand, when Jesus asks a question, he's on a quest. His question is not meant, he, he already knows the answer. Moses, what is that in thine hand? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. To the woman at Samaria, he said, he said, where is your husband? See, he already knows the answer to the question. He said to Jacob, what is your name? He's not asking to be enlightened. He's asking so that he can get into a conversation with you. And through revealing, oh hallelujah, revealing himself to you, he can enlighten you. His question has an answer that he wants to reveal to you. So you get, in fact, some of you are undergoing questioning right now. You think you're just going through a trial in life. No, 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 you are being questioned by God. God is asking you you questions like he did his disciples where is your faith how many loaves have ye is there any meat anywhere nearby he already knows the answer to the question but he's got you on a quest he's got you on a journey and you're going to arrive at a place of knowing him Hallelujah. He said, I got a question for you. All right. He said, what think you of Christ? What do you mean, what do we think of Messiah? Whose son is he? They said, he's the son of David. He said, yeah, I thought you'd say that. So now let me ask you a question. Because the Bible says... That David said, the Lord said unto my Lord, whoo, hallelujah, sit down on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So you're saying this is David's son, and that's all he is, is David's son. I'm trying to explain to you, he's more than just the son of David, he's the son of God. 
Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you that God didn't send another. God didn't send some great prophet. God didn't send some great teacher. God didn't send just one other in a long line of successive anointed individuals. But God was manifest in the flesh. The everlasting Father became the only begotten Son of God. I'm trying to tell you Pharisees and you Herodians and you Sadducees and anybody that'll listen, Jesus Christ is Lord. That was the answer. That was the answer. Jesus Christ is Lord. This is why Isaiah said his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. This is why Zechariah said in that day there shall be one Lord and his name shall be one. This is why David said he humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. This is what Abraham rejoiced to see the day of when he saw that ram rustling in the thicket. He saw the day of Christ when Jehovah Jireh would provide him. Self allow. This is what God meant when He told the serpent. That you have bruised the heel of the seed of the woman. But the seed of the woman shall crush your head. Oh, hallelujah. This is what the Bible was talking about when God said, I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, there is none other. I am the first. I am the last. I am he which was and is and is to come. The almighty That's Isaiah. Jesus said the same thing in Revelation. I am the first and I am the last. I am he which was and is and is to come. The almighty. Now how many first and last are there? There's only one first and he's the last. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. He is God. Manifest in the flesh. His answer. His answer to his own question was this. Jesus is Lord. That's what I want you to get, Pharisees. That's the answer to this question. Jesus Christ is Lord. And from that day forward, they answered or durst not ask him any more questions. You want to know why? Because every one of their questions were answered. I want you to understand something tonight. I don't know what question is coursing through your mind. But every one of your questions are answered by this revelation. Jesus is Lord. You hear what I'm telling you? I don't know I don't know what kind of symptoms you got raging in your body and you've got questions about death and mortality and 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 maybe the doctors even give you a prescribed amount of time but here's the answer to those questions. Jesus Christ is Lord. Maybe you've got questions about the existence of God. Maybe you've got questions about does God really love me? Here's the answer to your question. Jesus Christ is Lord. Maybe you've got questions about are my children going to make it? Is their marriage going to make it? Is my marriage going to make it? Am I going to get out of this trial alive? Am I going to have a job by the end of the week? Here's the answer to your question. Jesus, (laughs) Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't need to know the particulars. I don't need to know the details. I know the answer to every question. I know the answer to every doubt. Jesus! 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 Jesus Christ is Lord! Once you get that settled in your spirit, It'll take care of every question that the enemy brings against you. Once you get it settled in your mind, he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. He is a most high God. He is the high and the lofty one. He's the all in all. He's the altogether lovely. Jesus Christ is Lord. Ha 
Come on, somebody, lift up your hands and praise him. If he's Lord, praise him. I said, if he's Lord, I wonder if somebody could praise him like he really is Lord. I wonder if somebody can magnify him like he really is Lord. I wonder if somebody can put your hands together and shout with the voice of triumph like Jesus really is the Lord of glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Uh, you know what I love about the Syrophoenician woman when she walked up to him she kept calling him Lord she said have mercy Lord she worshipped him and said Lord he called her a dog and she said truth Lord what I like about the Roman centurion, the Syrophoenician woman wasn't even a Jewish woman. The Roman centurion wasn't a Jewish man. He was a Roman centurion. But when he came to Jesus, he said, I am not worthy that you should come under the roof of my house. I am a man under authority. I know what it means to say go and come. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord over the disease that's in my house you are Lord over the problem that I'm facing right now you are Lord you have all power you have all authority here we're going to do something right now you ready I want everybody that's been having questions launched at you from the enemy. Raise your hand. He's been launching questions your way. Come on, there you go. We're going to answer him. Okay, we're going to answer him. Here it is. Ready? Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Say it again. Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now hear, hear me. Hear me. There was a lady that walked in one time. She was, she was screaming at the devil she was so tormented by the devil he had so haunted her and taunted her and tormented her spirit she was screaming at him and, and, and she would close her eyes and bare her teeth and she would scream at Satan and I stopped her I said, I said ma'am you don't have to talk to him We don't interact with him. We look to our Lord. Now I want somebody that's been haunted and taunted by your adversary. And he's got you engaged in a back and forth. And you're feeling frustrated because you can't seem to find peace in your mind. I want you to stop talking to the devil and start talking to the Lord. Come on, look to the Lord and say, 
I love you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Come on, somebody, cry out to the Lord of glory right now. Come on, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord! Who is this King of glory? The Lord! Strong and mighty, He is the King of glory! Come on. We're going to have a wave of worship. We're going to have a wave of worship. I want folks who know who Jesus is to begin to magnify him like he's Lord of all, like he's King of kings, like he's a chain breaker, like he's a heavy load sharer. I want you to praise him like he's Jehovah Jireh, like he's Jehovah Rapha, like he's Jehovah Mekadash, like he's Jehovah Nissi, like he's Jehovah Shalom. Come on, we're going to start over here. Give him a wave of worship. Clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Sing aloud. Shout aloud. Come on, right here. Shout aloud. Come on, move on over now. Give him praise. Give him praise. You ready? You ready? Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, give him praise. That's it. He's putting it under your feet right now. He's putting it under your feet right now. He's putting it under your feet right now. I need you to praise him like it's under your feet. Come on, praise him like it's under your feet. Come on, praise him like it's under your feet. Some of you have been letting the devil walk all over you. It's time to put your foot down like he's under your feet. It's time to pick your foot up and put it down like he's under your feet.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. He's doing something in this house. Hey, come on, lift him up. He's in this house. He's at work. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, lift him up in this house. He's at work. He's at work. Come on, let him put it all under his feet right now. You've been carrying it too long. That question has been haunting you for too long. It's time to put it under the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall bow every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice and sing it unto him. He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Oh, every knee. Hallelujah. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ. Lord, oh, he is Lord, he is Lord, yes, he has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Lift up your voice and say it to him. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. 